Hello and welcome to the next tutorial in our WISD beginner series. In this lesson, we're going to answer a very important question that we need to get our heads around to start using WISD to build web applications with Webflow. And that is, what is WISD? If you know already, feel free to skip to the next video. If you don't, we're going to go through that in this video. The short answer, WISD is a tool for visually creating JavaScript the same way Webflow is a tool for visually creating HTML and CSS. That is it in a nutshell. This JavaScript can be used to make your website interactive, allow users to log in and register, to store information, to do basically everything that you can't build with Webflow by itself. So let's look a little further into these three technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you've used Webflow for any length of time, you'll be familiar with HTML, hypertext markup language, and CSS, cascading style sheets. HTML is a markup language. It's not a programming language. It doesn't let us say, if this happens, do that next. It essentially lets us define the structure of the page. Here's the header with the nav bar, links. Here's the main page, images, text, paragraphs, links, all that good stuff is handled with HTML. CSS cascading style sheets let us define the style of our website, how it looks, the colors, the font sizes, the padding, the margin, that's all done with CSS. JavaScript is a scripting language. Now it is used in Webflow for managing interactions. When you create interactions, there's JavaScript created to handle those interactions. So if we go over to Webflow, this is our standard Webflow designer. Up here in the top right, there's a little code icon that says export code if we hover over it. And this allows us to export our Webflow site. In particular, the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript, and the assets, the images, the videos that are on our website. And there we have our HTML, our CSS, our JavaScript, and our assets, our images that are in use. So the point here is that when you're using the Webflow Designer, all that's happening in the background is the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript are changing. This is the core output of Webflow. But the whole point of Webflow is that we don't have to deal with any of this. It takes care of that for us, but it's useful to understand how it works in the background. WISD is similar to what Webflow does for HTML and CSS, but it is for JavaScript. So what I'm gonna show you in a couple of moments is how we can set up a very simple feature where you click this button, this number here is gonna go up each time you click it. And if you refresh the page and come back, it is going to remember how many times it was clicked. So what we have is a visual interface for creating and managing our JavaScript code. WISD is also going to host this code for us. So we don't have to worry about where on the internet it's living. And similar to Webflow, it's going to make it very easy to publish our JavaScript to either a staging domain for testing purposes or also to a live custom domain. So you'll see a lot of overlap with how Webflow and WISD work. So WISD makes it easier to create, manage and update JavaScript. And we can use that JavaScript to build anything from very simple interactions like this button tracker that I'm going to show you all the way to very complex real world business applications where users can log in, register, reset their password and create and update data on the website. Let's take the example of a jobs board. You want job seekers to be able to register, to browse jobs and apply to them. And you want companies to be able to create their own profile create job listings specific to their company and to view the submissions that come in. We can do all of that with Webflow as the front end, WISD 
handling the JavaScript, all of the logic, and then some sort of backend service where we can store that information, which we'll look into in a bit. It hosts and delivers our code for us. So in the next tutorial video, we're going to look at actually creating a Wiz project and linking it to Webflow. It essentially just involves putting a script into the header of every page on our Webflow site. So all of that is taken care of us. Just as with Webflow, you pay for a hosting package, they take care of hosting the website. The same is true of WIST. It's going to handle the storage and delivery of your JavaScript code. It also makes team collaboration easy. Multiple users can work in WIST on the same project at the same time. And in general, it simplifies building advanced web app functionality. Instead of having to type all the JavaScript yourself, host it yourself, load it onto the website yourself, WIST is going to take care of all of that for you. So everything that Webflow does to make your life easier when building websites, WIST is going to do with building web apps. It's going to make it easier, quicker, and most importantly, more enjoyable. So let's quickly look at the distinction between websites and web apps. With Webflow, you can build websites. So these provide information and they display content. Web apps, on the other hand, are interactive. They let the user perform tasks and manipulate data. Websites are usually static or have minimal interactivity, clicking links, filling out forms, what you generally do with new Webflow websites. Web apps, on the other hand, are dynamic. They respond to user inputs and they remember or store information. So in the case of our job board, you need to be able to log in and if you're a company, create a job post. So that has to be stored somewhere and the website becomes dynamic. It's now a web application. There are users from all around the world contributing and changing content on the web app. Websites usually don't have a database and don't connect to external services, whereas web apps tend to have a database and connect to some sort of external service. An example would be you're storing information in Airtable, and when a user stores information, we connect to an external email service to send the user an email saying you've created X, Y, or Z, and it's been stored in the database. Websites are typically made up of HTML, CSS, and some simple JavaScript interactions in the case of Webflow. Web apps use a lot more JavaScript and typically have a backend where you have API endpoints and a database. And if you're not familiar with API endpoints, fear not, we're going to be covering everything about them. So who is WISD for? WISD is for anybody who wants to build web apps using Webflow. It is suitable for beginners, so Webflow developers who are new to web apps and coding and want to build web apps with Webflow, and also developers and coders who already have experience with web applications. WISD is going to make it much easier to build, launch, and maintain the JavaScript code for your web apps. Prerequisites. What do you need to know to follow this tutorial? At the minimum, you have some familiarity with Webflow. This tutorial series isn't going to cover how to get started with Webflow. It will show you how to use Webflow alongside WISD, but you'll still need some basic Webflow knowledge to get started. Good to know, but absolutely not critical. We will cover all of these. If you know them already, you're gonna get up to speed with WISD a little bit quicker, but if you don't know these, don't worry, by the end of the tutorial series, you will. Basic understanding of HTML and CSS, JavaScript or coding basics, variables, if else statements, for loops, and the basics of APIs and databases. Again, if you have no idea what those are, we're going to cover it, worry not. If you do, it'll make it a little quicker to get up and running with WIST. So some example functionality of what we can build with WIST. Registration and login forms for users and my account page where they can manage their information. Dynamic forms, rendered lists and interactive elements. CRUD, this is an acronym for create, update and delete and that's how we manage data. So in the case of our job board, users need to be able to create new jobs or applications. 
They need to be able to read or browse existing ones on the website. They need to be able to update them in case their job changes. And they need to be able to delete their data or remove their job posting once it is filled. And finally, we can integrate with third party services for a whole variety of tasks. A couple of common ones are sending emails and texts using AI, using the Webflow API and more. So let's dive in to an example. On my Webflow website, I want to set up a very simple interaction. I want to have a button that when clicked is going to increment this number with the number of times the user has clicked the button. That's going to be tracked. It's going to be stored in the user's browser so that if they refresh the page, that number is going to stay there. Now you could do this with JavaScript on its own, not using WISD. And that's what I've done in the case of this page. So I have some JavaScript down here and that is going to handle what I just laid out. The number is going to go up when the button is clicked and that is going to be tracked in the user's browser. So if we visit this page, we can see I've been here already. I've clicked it nine times. And if I click it a couple of more, the number is going to go up. And if I refresh the page, the number is going to stay there. Now, this is very simple. And there is a small amount of JavaScript code, 26 lines. But imagine a bigger web application, a web application where users need to be able to log in, register, where you're tracking information across different pages. This JavaScript is going to grow very quickly. And if you're not very good with JavaScript, it's going to become more difficult to manage that and update it over time. And that's where WISD comes in. So we're going to go through all of this in a lot more depth in the next video. But very briefly, this is the WISD configurator. It's where we can create the JavaScript for our project. Over on the left hand side, we have the main areas of WISD. We have my apps where we can link third party applications. In the next video, we're going to look at using ChatGPT and Airtable. Requests are where we send or receive information from those apps that we added. So for Airtable, we want to store the story that we're going to create. And for ChatGPT, we want to send our prompt, our story text and get a AI generated story back. Events are where we make things happen based on something else happening. If this happens, do that. Elements are how we add logic to our dynamic elements that we want to change on the page. If we go up here to x-ray, we can see all of our elements highlighted. And we'll be looking at why that's important in the next video. And the data store allows us to store and access information that is accessible to our web application. Variables, navigation will let us see what page we're on. Cookies and secrets we'll get into in a further video as well as input fields and forms. So in this scenario, I need to create a variable which is basically a store that stores information, but it only stores it temporarily. That will do for our case. We don't need to store this in a database. So I can click the plus icon here and I can make a new variable in this panel over on the right. And I'm going to call it number of clicks. And for naming things, we want to use underscores as opposed to hyphens. We can set an initial value. This is the function editor. Again, we'll get into this in more detail, but what we want to do here is we want to say return zero. Anytime we type code inside the function editor, we need to have a return statement that basically says what the output of the code will be. Again, we'll get into it in more detail soon, but we want this to start off at zero. We then want this to persist in storage. We want to store this in the user's browser. Session storage means if they leave the page, if they close it and come back, it's gone. It only lasts for the duration of the session. Local storage will stay there for the long term unless the user clears the cookies and other information that the website is storing. So we're going to go for local storage. Next up, we need to add some logic to this click me button. So two ways we can do that. We can go to x-ray and we can click, which is going to open up 
the events and actions for this element on the right hand side. We can also go over to elements and access it from here. So when we hover over these, it'll show us on our canvas which one we have selected. So in the first tab here, we can set a couple of settings. If this element is visible, what the text content of it is, CSS classes. What we want to do is set up a event. And we can add one or more events to our elements. And when we click add event, we will have to put in the event type. You can use any from this list. You can also type in your own. We're going to go for click. Then we want to give an action to this event. And we have a couple of different options here that we'll look at in more depth. We want to go for set variable. And in this drop down, we'll see a list of variables that we have created. In our case, we just have number of clicks and we need to set its new value each time this click event happens. So we want to return the value of our variable so we can access our variables with V, number of clicks, and we want it to be whatever it currently is plus one, like so. Lastly, we need to link our variable to this number here. So I'm gonna go over to elements on the left and go into click tracker heading. And we don't need this to have any events. Users won't be clicking on it or doing anything with it. What we do need to do is set its text. So we can show either plain text, HTML or markdown. For our purposes, plain text is fine. And if we click into the value box, we need to first of all return something. And what we want to return here is our variable, which we can either access by typing V dot and seeing the list of our variables or with this button, we can open our data store, which is a floating window of all the data that's managed in our WISD application. We'll get into what these mean in the next video, but we have V for variables and we want to click here to place this and we want to click on number of clicks and close out of that. So I'm going to refresh the page or the canvas to make all of this take effect. Each time I click that button, this is going to increment. If I reload the page, it's going to stay there. Now, if I want this to happen on my live site, I need to go up to publish, select my staging domain and click publish. And then when I go over to my page, the same thing happens. And that is a very simple, I won't even call this a web application. It's very simple interactivity with some storage made using WISD. So that is the very basics of what WISD can do. We can create variables in our data store and we can add events to elements on our page to make things happen. In this case, we're just incrementing our variable by one whenever this button is clicked and we are showing the outcome of that or the current number that that variable is set to on this text here. So if you didn't fully understand all of that, don't worry, we're going to deep dive into this in the next video. But this is the core of what WISD does. And that is it, folks, for this introduction into what WISD is. Hopefully you've gotten an overview. You don't need to know everything about how it works from this video. In the next tutorial, we're going to go back into the WIS configurator that we saw here briefly, and we're going to step through everything it can do item by item while we build a ChatGPT story generator. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.